Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art. It is Friday, June 2nd, 2017, and I'm very late getting this up today, and I apologize. Uh, normally, we have these up by around noon in the middle of the day. It is now 9 o'clock at night. I'm just getting to it. It's been a frantic week around here. I apologize. You know, I got an email from a couple people asking me if I was going to do it, and I said I will as soon as I can. We were working on the newsletter and other things. So, anyway, here we are. And uh, we're going to start right away, because uh, I'm exhausted. I need to go home. Uh, this, this was one of the items that was in the newsletter last week. This was a terrific little uh, paste box with very finely done inscription on it, uh, front and back. Nice, nice example. Beautifully done. There's the back of it. Uh, and I think, I think this was a heck of a good buy for a scholar's collector. Um, and while it may seem like it brought a lot, it really isn't. This was a terrific piece. Similar one on here a few months ago brought around $7,000. Um, this one went for $1,000 this time around. And I think it was a great buy, a nice piece, a beautiful script, nice kanji on it. So bravo whoever got this. And uh, this is something I want to make an apology on. Um, we put this Buddhist head, a nice Thai uh, metal uh, bronze head with some gilding on it. There it is. And uh, we thought it was rather attractive, nice surface, nice old one. And uh, we didn't notice something, and it's something we always notice, and we don't include them. The guy is a, is a ridiculous uh, shipping rate on here, $1,840 from Italy uh, for global shipping, economy shipping. Um, this thing was about eight inches tall. Um, this guy will not be in here again. He, he, he is apparently a crook when it comes to shipping. So um, I hope nobody had a horrible surprise on that. If you did, don't pay them or tell them to readjust that rate. It's ridiculous. All right, moving along. This was an interesting lot. This was a, a lot of several pieces, the, these Giware uh, items. Let me go back to this. I want to show you something. This is a, a, a nice little group. It was these two items. This is a little tiny gi type planter with this rather nice sort of quasi-garlic neck uh, uh, crackle vase. And what's interesting about this, were it not for the mark on the bottom of this, Mark China, uh, a lot of people would swear up and down that this is a late 18th century vase. Okay, it's not. And it's a, it's a great example of um, what they continued to make into the 19th century. This piece was made after 1896 because it's the way it's marked. Could have been made in 1910. And uh, it, looks, uh, it looks a lot older. It looks a lot older than that and uh, take a good look at that. It's a nice example. I'm not knocking the piece, but I'm just uh, pointing out that it's, it's interesting how old something can look. And this is the little gi type planter that came with it. It's got a hole in the bottom. It probably had an under tray at one point, but uh, both are very nice examples. And they didn't bring a crazy amount of money. They went for $338, which I think is reasonable. Uh, with or without the China mark, I like that little vase. That was a nice looking vase. And it demonstrates that on occasion, the uh, kiln guys really got it right, um, even in the, in the early 20th century on, on that kind of product. All right, and this was another good buy for someone during the, this is about a 40 by 50 inch uh, yellow silk, uh, nicely, nicely done, finely worked uh, framed panel, uh, but beautiful quality all the way around. Uh, if you can blow it up, take a look at this. The needlework on this is just wonderful. Great colors, and it was in good condition on a yellow ground. And it went for a pretty reasonable, it was around $280, $286, 12 bids. Uh, that was a nice buy. Very attractive piece of silk. And uh, then there was this nice pair of, uh, well, he, so he called it Wutsai, or, or Femi Ver with Wutsai enamels, a nice pair of vases. Our friend over in the Netherlands sold these last week. They closed on Sunday. Nice mirror pair, um, nice big vases. And they did pretty well. They brought $1,527, I think a very well-deserved uh, price. They were 19th century, but excellent quality. Excellent quality. It's all about the quality. <coughs> and uh, here, here's a box that uh, someone had up. Here, here it is. Um, here's the interior. See what it looks like. There's the top, little, like a cricket box with grisaille and stipple decoration. Nice little box. And it did very well. It brought $980. You want to keep your eye out for these. Um, you called it a sensor. I, I always think of those as cricket boxes. And uh, there was this iron piece, this triad. Rather good one, nice old one. It looked like it had a good surface on it. And uh, it did fairly well. It brought uh, $2,184. 
Uh, the, the much older ones of these bring, of course, much, much more, 10, 15,000. This was probably an 18th century one, 19th century, somewhere in there. And this rather nice, uh, this is a seller that we keep an eye on. She seems to have a source, for, or people bring must bring her fans to sell. She's in Spain, and uh, every week she has some good ones up. And this was a nice one, very beautiful, silver filigree with enamel, and it appeared to be in wonderful condition. And uh, sold for $2,113, which is a, a fair price for that. A nice object uh, made during the middle part of the 19th century, but very good quality. And there was this nice looking Ming jar, uh, late Ming period, uh, for those of you that know, it obviously is. Here's the foot rim on it, pretty much what you want to see. Notice that this, you can quite clearly see the little chatter lines running outward, uh, latter part of the 1600s, uh, yeah, latter part of the uh, 1500s, early 1600s. Nice looking piece, probably Wan Li, and uh, just lovely. And it went for $1,231, which is not a bad price at all for one of those. Not bad. And this big export platter, export porcelain, seems to be uh, still very soft and reasonable. This is a wonderfully well done platter uh, with a, the very classical sort of landscape scene you see on these. Uh, nicely done, good color. And uh, went, drum roll, it went very reasonably, $179. Um, we, we used to have these in live auctions we ran, and, and gosh, these things would bring four or five hundred every single time out. So <clears throat> something, is, something seems to be happening with the export market. And then there was this Kang Shi style jar with precious objects and these uh, big peony blossoms all over it. Nice looking jar, still had its lid. Only problem it had was it had some uh, chips out of the feet over in here, but the piece still stood flat and it looked fine. But that is, it's, a, it's not a Kang Shi piece. If any of you looked at it and were debating it, the, the foot's wrong, it's not smooth enough, it's not quite white enough, and um, the decoration is, is not the quality you'd see on a Kang Shi example. And it still did fine. It brought uh, $477, despite that. And moving along, uh, this was sort of a surprise. This is a very nice um, uh, 19th century rank badge. Very nice quality. For some reason, it, it doesn't enlarge very much. See if it'll enlarge here. And uh, no, it doesn't really. Any rate, it's a nice example, sort of an unusual pattern for a rank badge. Better quality than most. And uh, it did just fine. It brought uh, a, a very nice price, $1,852. But it was also in very good condition and didn't have any stains. We did look at it as carefully as we could. And uh, uh, nice clean silks that aren't stained or damaged uh, are, you know, of course, very desirable. And there was this Republican period uh, plate. Uh, here's the back of it. Uh, it has a, uh, an apocryphal uh, uh, Yongchen mark on it. It is, and of course, from that time. But a pretty typical uh, Republican uh, back by... Uh, our estimation, there's the, the decoration on it was very nice, good soft enamels, slightly raised, and uh, it did pretty well. It brought uh, $1,429. Uh, so Republican pieces are continuing to do very, very well. I'm assuming it went to a, a buyer in China. And uh, our friend over in the Netherlands had this up. This is a, a, a Lohan plate done in grisaille decoration, which typically are only seen on export pieces. Um, uh, this this type these, this coloration, and it was it had six of the 18 Lohans on it. Uh, beautiful quality, mid 18th century, uh, rather rare example. And uh, somebody who collects, obviously, a couple of collectors went after it. It brought 1825 dollars. Um, he called it a dish. It looks like a shallow bowl to me. It's hard to tell from the pictures. That's a bowl. Okay. At any rate, uh, nice ex nice piece, good piece, and. Um, uh, his seller name is Hans3962. He gets great things. And uh, this was uh, sort of the end of the uh, uh, Ming Salad on incense burners. We seem to hit a spate of them um, over the last three or four weeks uh, from a variety of places around the world. This was another one that went up. Um, as you recall, we had a, a very nice Buy It Now example that one of our regulars uh, managed to scoop up for uh, almost half what this one went for, and it was actually an older example. But this was a very nice one as well, uh, with the cross hatching and the wave patterning, and uh, it brought uh, $1,171, which is uh, right in the zone for these at auction. But uh, keep an eye on eBay. We will put them on when they come for these. Sometimes the buy it now prices, you can get a better deal. 
And this was a really interesting uh, big Phoenix plate charger. Uh, as I recall, it was around 15 inches in diameter. Unusual pattern with the Phoenix holding open a scroll of uh, uh, depicting flowers. And uh, very nice coloring. And uh, this did pretty well. It brought $1,558, 43 centimeters. That's a, that's a big, big plate. And uh, quite a display for your house. Uh, I, th I still think plates are a, a bargain considering the artwork you get. And here's another one. This was that big uh, Kung Shi piece that we liked that had the darker blue center with the radiating flowers and then this, these arabesque borders. Really lovely. Uh, and uh, this one also did pretty well. It brought $928 and it was 39 centimeters, slightly smaller than the other. On these big charges, as they go up by the inch almost, the prices jump. They jump by in the hundreds, um, even if they're very similar. The bigger, the better. And uh, then we had this, the very nice pair of uh, reticulated bamboo uh, Chinese silver, all hall hallmarked um, from uh, a seller. Uh, his seller's name is uh, Super Shrink. And uh, he, he always has great silver up, not just Chinese. But this was a nice one. It had the uh, memorial um, uh, marking on it. And uh, it did very well. The pair of little bowls brought $743. Chinese silver is continuing. Uh, to gain traction more and more, and the Chinese are starting to buy it. So I think you will see some price jumps and maybe in the next year or so. And then there was this rather nice bar-brimmed, um, uh, incised decorated under the glaze uh, Ming Celadon, Long Kwan Kiln. Uh, very nice quality bowl. Had some wear in the center here, you can see it, uh, which is pretty typical on these. Uh, Celadons without any wear and a good deep, deep color bring a premium. And this was still a nice bowl. Uh, there's the back that you typically expect to see. The, somebody had done an ink script down the side. There it is. There's a detail of it. Very typical uh, for a, a big Long Quan bowl. And it did pretty well. It brought $2,136. Uh, large, deeper green examples of these can go way up. They can go into six figures. Um, and we're going to talk about some of those <clears throat> um, from the Hong Kong sales last week. I haven't done that video yet. I'm going to do it first thing Monday, I promise. And uh, you're going to see how they did over there. And there were some tremendous prices. And we'll go, I'll go through them. And uh, we'll talk about it a bit. All right. And uh, then there was this spinach and egg bowl. Uh, we came across this with the receipts and everything from uh, uh, um, uh, a seller overseas. Uh, complete with this really cool old note from the retailer and they they didn't pay much for it. it looks like they paid about eighteen dollars for the thing way back oh hess auctions had this hess had this uh but a, a nice a nice spinach and egg bowl kung shi uh they do not turn up very often and it brought a price for something that doesn't turn up very often it brought sixty two hundred and sixty nine dollars but a good example um Here's the bottom of it. That's what they look like. On occasion, you do see a little bit of the enamel slip over the edge. And this uh, fairly deeply uh, uh, done foot, which remained um, remains unglazed. That's not unusual to see on these. And uh, the, a very nice white bottom with the uh, six-character uh, Kung Shi mark. It was a mark and period bowl and uh, did, did just fine. Also had some old scratches and whatnot in the enamels which you do see on these, and it had a very short hairline. Looks like maybe a little over a quarter inch. But uh, uh, f fine quality spinach and egg bowls, especially with this, this nice clear yellow, don't turn up very often. So uh, that, was a, that was a nice example, and uh, uh, somebody got a good bowl for it. A good, uh, a good bowl for their money, I meant. And last was uh, Joni's had the, her sale ended on a Monday, and she had, there wasn't a lot in there. She had had her big sale a, a week or so ago, but she had some satsuma that she sold. And uh, this was a rather nice Mei Ping that she put up. Uh, very nice shape, uh, signed, and all that good stuff. And um, there it is, and it brought $1,115. Uh, fine quality satsuma still has a pretty good market if you come across it out there. And, even if you collect Chinese and you want to sell it, put it up on eBay. You'll get pretty good money for it, if it as long as it's signed, okay? And uh, as I said, we're going to get to the uh, newsletter sort of roundup of the uh, Hong Kong sales on Monday. Uh, uh, there were some wonderful results and, uh, and a couple of disappointments. Rather surprised. There was one in particular I was very surprised, and we'll talk about that. And uh, the newsletter uh, mailer is going out in a couple of minutes. 
And everybody have a uh, great weekend. And if you don't subscribe here, please do on YouTube. And uh, subscribe to the, our weekly uh, newsletter catalog at bitamount.com. And uh, have a fabulous weekend. And we'll see you all next time. All right. Bye-bye.